I always thought it'd be nice to do nothing. This is it. So, could the two of you just start over from the beginning and do it again? <laughs> You know, if you talk about the restoration or the transformation, uh, it's never an argument against anything. Now, it helps to make distinctions. So you say the difference between uh, individualism and communalism, those distinctions are helpful. But it's not an argument against patriarchy. It's not, you don't go to Mars and say, who's the god of war, and say, could I interest you in peace? And you don't go to top management who gives order to the world and say, can I interest you in surprise? <laughs> so there's nothing to argue about. Uh, so that's one thought. The other thought is that all restoration, transformation occurs through language. And so the world is transformed through the words that we use. And, uh, and I love the sentence, in a word is a world, and every word is a world. And so the restoring occurs the moment you find new language to describe what you're living into. So all transformation is linguistic. And it's not a matter of semantics. And it's not a matter of translating what I hear into my own language. There's no transformation there. And uh, two disciplines in the world uh, are central, central. One is art. So art has a job to do. It's not entertainment. When Bob sings, he's not entertaining us. He's a prophet. He's prophesying and producing an alternative experience through your singing. And your singing, are, a lot of them are laments. A lot of them are grief cries. A lot of them are promises. You say, I, last night you brought into the world the possibility that I can lean on you. And so the function of art is prophecy. And the, the purpose of prophecy, one, is to describe the world as it is. The emperor has no clothes. This is the world as it is. And the other is to say, and there's another way. There's an alternative world. And so all the poetry, all the storytelling, the language of Angelus offers us an alternative world. So all of that in, this, in her speaking of it, opens up another world. <clears throat> Just in the, as soon as she says there's three things, it prophesizes another world of experience just in the saying of it. And what she uh, gives us, uh, the purpose of that language is the experience of aliveness, to step out of our toll box, our vertical coffin. And Angelus does it so that we experience aliveness in the her saying of these stories and her making these lists. And so that's the process if you want to operationalize restoration. So if you want to really get granular and operationalize it, you say, well, let me use, pay attention to the language you're using that brings in an alternative world. And that's what I thought we'd work on this morning. And the artist does it through poetry and through song, and the artist is the prophet. The other central function is journalism, that the task, the journalist is the communal storyteller. And the world we have now, in some ways, isn't reported by journalism, it's constructed by journalism. And the big journalistic question is, what constitutes news? And in the patriarchal world, we've decided what's wrong with us constitutes news. And so you pick up any newspaper you want, and the headlines are always some variation of, this is what's wrong with us. Who died? Who cheated? 
who lied, all of this. And the, the most liberal of papers is doing the same thing. It doesn't matter. So the liberal conservative conversation is useless. And so part of our task, if the communal or the common good is what you're after, makes, is to reconstruct journalism, reconstruct what we call news, reconstruct the common daily story of who we are. And it's, so that's the second. The last thought is all of this is occurring now. There is a movement afoot in the land. Now you got me talking like that. <laughs> Even moving my arm, I never engage in any physical movement. <laughs> the left arm has gone berserk. I have no control over it. But this movement's underway in any dimension you want, whether it's economics. <laughs> this, to me, is an aerobic experience. <laughs> whether it's in... Uh, Theology, there's liberation theology. Uh, whether it's in architecture, there's co-housing. People are now reconstructing buildings and housing so that we live a communal life and can raise each other's children, feed each other. And, uh, and you're it. So all of you are in the midst of this transformation. So it's nothing that we have to start. We just have to make it visible and amplify it. Uh, so those are thoughts about how it, so it comes into the world by paying attention to the nature of our speaking. And those of you that I know are doing that. Gary is in charge of public works for the city of Salinas. 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 Uh, I hesitated knowing I was taking a chance of saying it wrong, Salinas, and I Kansas. did. Well, I grew up in Kansas, so that's the difference. So he's the poet of public works. That's his job title. Who would have thought that we'd have a poet in charge of water and waste management, solid and liquid? Yeah. <laughs> and he runs the airport with his, you know, without even looking. And so in his speaking as the poet, as the head of, he's bringing another world into being. And he's talking about different ways of being, different ways of coming together, different ways of talking to each other. And so he's a community builder, and you're all community builders, even though it's never your job title. All right? Brian worked for Mars. He was an executive there, and I know that he was bringing into being a world organized around community, and one that cared for the, those that were uncared for producers, whatever. And so whatever your title is, you're still building community and you're bringing it. So I thought the way to get completion for being together is to have you in small groups, which is always the place where intimacy and all these things occur, and have you come up with a sentence or an image that captures the world that you are in the process of bringing into being a sentence that you can construct that describes the world that you are committed to bringing into being. <coughs> not what you're doing, or not what you don't know, or not what you're not doing, or not what you haven't done yet, or I don't want to hear about the desert that you're walking through and you've got 39 more days before you're finished. <laughs> I don't want to hear about the fact if I grow up, I haven't grown up yet. Everybody has a story of what they're not. This is the cost of patriarchy. And so that doesn't take you anywhere. So I'm not interested in people's story of what they're not or the struggle. I want to give you a chance to spend 30 minutes with two other lovers to say, what's the sentence or image I can construct that would give voice to the world that I'm in the process of bringing into being. Now, if you don't understand this assignment, that's perfect. Because <laughs> any assignment well understood takes you nowhere. So people say, can you define your terms? And you say, of course not. Why would I control you in that silly way? What do you mean by bringing into being exactly? 
So the ambiguity of the question creates space for something new to occur. And that's the methodology of restoration is a question, always. A question dropped into a small group, always. A question dropped into a small group where people have chosen to be with the stranger, always. So you're bringing hospitality into the room when you say, sit with someone you know the least. And it's a question dropped into a small group where strangers have chosen to be with each other under the injunction of not being helpful. I'm not interested in what you did when you were my age, even though I'm older than all of you. <laughs> I'm not interested in what... I was doing at my age. <laughs> so, so all the stories of victory are false claims. And here's, what, here's what I did when I was your age. Glenn, how's it going? And the answer for us all is not well. There's too much, too much suffering in the world for me to claim victory. Mm -hmm. I know you're doing well, but we're not doing well. And that's the commons. The, the essence of the commons is the notion of to what extent am I invested in the well-being of the whole. And that's what the education is for. Is to, so don't be helpful. You substitute help, as Angela says, with an acknowledgment of the mystery of who we are. And my only task with you, my love for you, is only expressed by trying to understand who you are. Only. Everything else is colonization. Don't use questions to be helpful, because we're watching. <laughs> Conspiracy is a fact. It's not a theory. And they're all over the place. They're ubiquitous. Got it? So those is, are the methodology of restoration. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean it occurs through engaging people in questions about intention, what I'm bringing into the world, in a small group with people who know each other the least and live under the injunction of not being helpful mm -hmm. and are physically close to each other. This is why building community through the Internet is impossible. Mm -hmm. Because I don't care that I can see you across the globe on a Skype, life-size, in all your glory. I'm still alone watching. Mm -hmm. uh, and so all that te technology, I'm still alone yeah. watching. Is it better than not watching? Of course it is. Am I glad we can call and I can see? I have a godson in Singapore. I like seeing Peter. But it's not community. There's no touch. I can't touch him. Yeah. So it's always in a small group, and then proximity is the last thing. So that's the thought. So let's do that. <laughs>